Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith. The primary focus of this video is for me to tell you about the changing conditions in the Arctic. So the, the polar vortex in the upper atmosphere over the Arctic seems to be, um, recently has, has uh, seemed to circulate or be centered around a region uh, near Greenland. Now, if you follow my videos, if you followed my videos for a long time, you'll know that um, about a year, year and a half ago, I did a video about how the huge warming in the Arctic, when it removes the Arctic sea ice, would leave the center of cold in the Arctic being over Greenland. And therefore, it seemed logical to me that the uh, jet stream system would start to rotate rather than over a region rather than be centered um, over around the North Pole or slightly offset from the North Pole towards Greenland, it would instead be centered over Greenland. And the center of Greenland is at 73 degrees north latitude. So that would represent a shift of 17 degrees um, in the center rotation of the polar vortex. And I then went on to discuss how that would completely change climate in the Northern Hemisphere. And some recent... Uh, data from Earth Null School, if you look at it, it seems that the center rotation has actually shifted, at least for a period of time, uh, to be centered more over Greenland than, than the uh, North Pole. So I talk about that in this video. I also talk about a large um, ozone hole that has appeared in the Arctic. Now, the sun is not too high, right? It's still very low on the horizon as we go into the northern hemisphere summer but um, nevertheless if the if the ozone hole stays in place for several more weeks then um, the there will be a higher incidence of solar radiation especially ultraviolet light uh, you know hitting that region and there is a there is a possibility that the ozone hole could shift down and I'm saying you know bring it to Canada you know let's have high ultraviolet um, radiation hitting the surface of the earth in Canada and that would maybe help with uh, reducing the transmission of the uh, coronavirus. Um, so also the, uh, the ice maximum, the Arctic sea ice maximum, always occurs in March. Usually it's around mid-March and this year it seemed to ha it happened on about March 2nd. So I'll show you some data on that and one of the ideas is, I mean, the drop-off has been very, very large in March compared to other years. So one of the ideas, you know, maybe that's, that's one of the connections that may be going on is that with the polar vortex shifted to be over Greenland, a large, the, the, uh, the circular motion, instead of um, hitting the uh, lower latitudes at the same latitude, it's shifted so it's going very, very low over, over uh, North America and Canada, and it's bringing warm air up into the Arctic and cold air from the Arctic out of the Arctic, and that could be contributing to the uh, rapid decline of the sea ice that's occurring right now. So I want to just show you those. Um, I want to show you that data um, in the video here, and I think Shackleton is getting restless. He wants to jump down. Okay, so I'll get to this uh, Earth Null School in a second. I just want to go to my, uh, this is my website, paulbeckwith.net, so please check it out. And, uh, you know, if you like my videos, please consider donating at my PayPal account to support my work. I don't know how many videos I'm up to now. Um, well over 500, maybe 700, 800, I, I, I don't know, I'd have to. Do, do, do a check. 15-minute um, videos, all talking about the science, mostly of climate change, lately of the coronavirus, because I talk about my passions and, you know, of course, the world is rapidly changing. We're experiencing exponential growth of a virus around the world, and uh, I try to cover as much as I can about that. But I do, uh, there's lots to talk about in climate still. Um, because you know, abrupt climate change is a, is a, is an extremely serious issue. 
So on Twitter, I've been sending out some information on the Arctic uh, recently. So this is the annual maximum in Arctic sea ice. Um, here we are, you know, this year. Okay, not a record low, but among the, um, you know, there's a couple years that were lower, but not too many. Um, and this is the Arctic, uh, this is from Zach Labe, and this is the Arctic uh, sea ice annual maximum happening um, in early March of this year. And since then, there's been quite a steep drop of the Arctic uh, sea ice extent. So I've tweeted out some things like that. Here we are currently. Um, and uh, one of the things I did want to show you, since I've been talking about the coronavirus a lot, is there's this video here um, showing phones on a Florida beach during spring break and where they all traveled during the outbreak. It shows you the connectiveness of our society. So this is the image here. And I can show you this video here. Okay, so this is uh, um, this is the phone signal. Here we go for Florida. All these all, it's lit up, showing all of the phone signals, the heat signature, if you like, heat map. So they're zeroing in on this um, region, uh, Fort Lauderdale beaches. Okay, and uh, so it indicates where people you know, where, where the signal is coming from the cell phone, so where people are. Um, okay, so there's a one particular area of the beach, and... Uh, okay, he's just setting up things in this uh, tectonics data. Okay, so what he does is he outlines an area of the beach, and there's all of these cell phones here, associated with people, and then he plays them through over time. He looks at this web of phones, smart break web, and then he projects, he looks forward in time towards the present, and this is where the people travel after they're on the beach. So you can see they travel all over Florida, and then in time they return to their homes, and here's all the people that were on that one area of the beach, how they spread out, you know, over the next, uh, you know, week. And, you know, come, a number coming up to Canada also. Okay, so our world is certainly connected. Let me get rid of this. Our world is certainly connected and, you know, people are very, very mobile, as you know, but that just illustrates how people are spreading, you know, so they, you know, so you can see clearly, you know, you get, a, you get, um, you catch the virus on a beach in Florida and then how it can easily spread around the entire U.S. as people return to, uh, to their homes after their vacation. Okay, so this is Earth Null School. And this is, um, this is about a week ago, March 21st. I'm looking at 70 um, hexapascals. So this, the jet streams are about 250. You can see how convoluted and wavy they are which is happening more and more, you know, often. And the ridges are bringing warm, humid air up to high northern regions, and the troughs are bringing cold Arctic air very far south. You can see how split up and fractured it is. And if you go to 70 uh, millibar, 70 hexapascal, you can see the polar vortex here. And you can see that it has, it's definitely offset. This is the North Pole right here. And the center of rotation here is close to, uh, you know, if you look at the center of rotation, it's elongated a bit, but the center of rotation is about 80 degrees north or so, um, centered on the northern part of Greenland. And uh, the reason why, if you go to 10 hexapascals, you can also see, you know, the center of rotation is even slightly lower, about 75 degrees. Okay, so in the, in the high uh, upper atmosphere, you get this polar vortex, fairly strong, and it seems to be offset from the North Pole, which is up here. Now, why is this important? Um, go to YouTube and you Google Jetstream Center of Rotation. I put out this video September 9th, 2018, where I talked about the jet, how the Jetstream Center of Rotation is to shift. I made this prediction that it would shift 17 degrees southward from the North Pole to Greenland. 
um, with the Arctic um, ice vanishing. So, and uh, you can watch the video, but I'll just talk about the key point here is when all the sea ice in the Arctic is vanished from melt and transport, what will happen? The so-called blue ocean event in the Arctic will mean that the last bastion of ice and coldness in the Arctic will be Greenland. Thus, instead of the center of coldness or the centroid, or you could call, I call it the cold troid, being near the North Pole, as it has been in human history, it will become centered over the middle of Greenland, and thus be at about 73 degrees north latitude. Thus, to first order simplicity, one can expect the jet streams to shift their center of rotation 17 degrees from the North Pole, where they are now, towards Greenland. This jet stream shift, causing a decoupling from Earth's axes of rotation, obviously has profound consequences for our global weather patterns and climate system and human civilization, plants and animals, and for example, our ability to grow food. But hey, humans will at least be able to drill and mine the Arctic, at least those of us that are left. Okay, so, so this was in September of 2018 when I um, discussed this. And here it appears that already there's still sea ice, but already the center of rotation seems to be shifting down significantly towards Greenland, as, as, I, as I predicted. Okay, uh, so let's have a look at the Arctic sea ice. So this is the Arctic sea ice extent, which is the area of ocean with at least 15% sea ice. This is from the National Snow and Ice Data Center. And we peaked here um, early in March, about March 2nd. And since then, there's been significant and steep drops. There's been a couple hundred K events where you lose 100,000 square kilometers of sea ice melting out or transporting out of the Arctic. In, in a single day. We've had some, you know, we've had some big losses already here. This is, if you just Google Arctic sea ice graphs, okay, then uh, you can find all of this data, you know, all of these plots, and you can click on them to, to drill down deeper into the data and see what's going on. Now, also a link from this site to uh, Zach Labes. Uh, site is you can see Zach and and I'm looking at some of his tweets here and specifically this is the Arctic sea ice drop off um, this is the Ar again the Arctic sea ice drop off um, and this is the uh, plot which I showed earlier so 2020 um, March 2nd or so was the was the maximum and then it's been dropping s significantly and I say part of this may be due to the offset of the polar vortex down towards Greenland because you'll notice that it dips down, the heavy winds dip down. This is about 42 degrees north. This is about 57 north, 62 north, and 65 north. So it's offset, okay? So it's bringing very cold air down to very low latitudes and very warm air up to very high latitudes. Um, and this is uh, one of the reasons why the Arctic is so warm and why the sea ice is dropping off a cliff. Okay, um, and if you go to uh, the Arctic Sea Ice Forum, which you can click a link from the Google Arctic Sea Ice Graphs, go to the Arctic Sea Ice Forum, you can read what people are starting to say about the melt, you know, how significant it is. Now also note that a rare ozone hole has opened up over the Arctic and it's big. The cold temperatures and a strong polar vortex um, makes it cold. That's the ozone destruction happens because of the chlorines and bromines. And here is last year in the Arctic. Um, and here is no ozone hole. And here's this year, big ozone hole. This is probably a record setting ozone, ozone hole. This is something very familiar to Antarctica, but not the Arctic. And this has been predicted. Lenten's global warming tipping, tipping point, you can just go to Google Images and find this, and uh, some of his papers on Arctic climate tipping points, et cetera, they talk about the ozone, um, Arctic ozone loss as being a tipping point. And this is his original paper, and if you go to the, the graph, Arctic ozone as being a tipping point. Okay, so we're undergoing huge uh, changes with abrupt climate change. Thanks for listening.